Hello everyone. Yes, the rumors are true. I am moving to New York City, the Big Apple, to go sleep with the rats and hang out with Madame Liberty. <laughs> my dreams for my time in New York are to meet the people from the Bon Appetit Test Kitchen, the cool ones, like Sola. <laughs> Anyway, I'm only going for four months, so I thought it would be an interesting look at everything that I brought because I'm obviously not bringing that much. I'm bringing just a little bit, and then I will buy things as I need them there at thrift stores. <laughs> Winter stuff first, I think it's most important, so that's what I'm packing first. Big coat, I love it. It's this cool little coat. <laughs> I have to put on socks so I don't give the foot people anything to work with. <laughs> I'm bringing this corduroy over coat. It was originally my dad's. I don't know, I think it's cool and it also reminds me of him and of home, so. This other green corduroy. I love corduroy, if you can't tell. It's my favorite fabric. <laughs> Pretty cool. This corduroy <laughs> multicolored long sleeve shirt. I love corduroy. Pants, who's excited? Gray corduroys. That's it. That's all I'm bringing. <laughs> I forgot to mention these corduroy pants. Very important part of my collection. Ow. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to the part of the video where I complain. <laughs> no, I'm actually really, really excited to be moving to New York. I know you can't tell by my monotone voice from like I'm really really excited but really I am excited I'm excited to obviously get out of my parents house no one's old you know to be living with their parents especially right now during coronavirus but I feel a little bit old but I am sad um, I'm sad to be leaving I feel like I've learned a ton about myself during this time of contemplation and it's been a really formative time I'm just gonna miss my parents a lot and I know that that's weird because I shouldn't live my life like being concerned about caring for my parents. <laughs> they're able to care for themselves. It's not like they're old. I don't know. I just know they've really enjoyed having me home and I have enjoyed being here. Secondly, I'm leaving behind this really awesome, awesome guy I've been seeing. I feel like we really get along. We're really compatible. And I always do this to myself when like something good is happening. I just end up running from it. Since we started seeing each other, I've been telling him like, I think I'm going to leave. So it's not like he ran me out of town, but it's funny. It's just like every time I think there's something good in terms of my relationship life, I end up moving. It's true. I had a really good thing going in Boston when I was there and I moved and now I'm doing it again. What the heck? <laughs> and lastly, a part of me wonders, you know, am I just running away from my problems again? Instead of dealing with them, you know, my lack of self-awareness or, or my over-anxieties or my inability to place myself in this world. I wonder if I'm just running from my problems, but they'll catch up to me, you know? But I think it's normal to be a little bit scared when you're moving anywhere. I am really excited. I'm super excited I'm living with my best friend, Julia. I am super excited that I am going to be, well, there's a lot of things to be excited for about New York, but these are just some of my Maybe you're doing the wrong thing, Jack. But no, I think I am doing the right thing. But the right thing isn't always easy. So that's it for me. Signing off. I'll see you guys at the airport. Mom, I'm leaving. Don't leave. <laughs> Are you going to miss me? I'm going to be so sad. You're going to make me cry right now. Oh, no. No. <laughs> I'll be back shortly. I know. It's just been so much fun. It has been fun. We've done a lot. We've painted. Who am I gonna make bread for? <laughs> made bread. Exercise. We've made fresh pasta. Yep. We've exercised. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Dance. We danced. I guess that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, mom, are you really sad? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, don't make me feel bad. And she goes, I'm excited for you to be out of here. <laughs> I was teasing. I didn't want to make you feel bad. Thank you. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi guys, it is day 14. I did it. Of quarantine, not just like my birth. <laughs> day 14, made it. <laughs> I've been quarantining for 14 days. Andrew Cuomo, you're welcome. Yes, I may be from the plagued state of California, but not me. I'm built different. <laughs> so I wanted to do a little bopping around today. I know um, I want to explore New York. Let's do something fun. Hope you come along for the ride. New York, baby! Hello, everyone. I'm here in New York City. Hello, everyone. I, too, am here in New York City. If you guys don't know, this is my friend Carson from San Diego. We grew up together. Well, the latter half of our growing, I think, was together. Yeah. First half, separate. We're here on a rooftop in New York. We don't live here. No, uh, I just know the code, um, the access code to this roof, um, so we are uh, using it. We are not meant to be here, and that's the New York life, you know? We are the New York rats that we have always wanted to be. I smell like trash already. Do the New York rats use a metro card? No, they just sneak right on. How do they get around? That's an amazing feat. Yeah, literally, feet. It's, um, they use the feet. Carson and I are in a pod. That's why we are not wearing masks. Oh, you know everything. It could be a breeze when you... What is it? <laughs> I don't know. Do a report on the book you never read. If a snap of your fingers, you can make it bend. That's a New York moment. We are close to Waverly Place. We're not close at all, but we're, we're here. Is that the next part of this video? <laughs> what? That we go to Waverly Place? Yes. We should. Yeah. I think there might be an actual, like, it's a sandwich shop, right, that they own? Yeah. yeah, I think there might be a sandwich shop on Waverly that is what they have based it on. I know exactly what we're doing next. <laughs> I sure hope it does. We're here in the BB, what is it? BBG. BBG. And I don't know if you can hear. In the Rose Garden, somebody is playing there. Steel drum? I just wanted to hop on here today because Carson and I were having a conversation about the dichotomy between having hope right now and also not having expectations right now. How do we have hope that this is going to end? Because that keeps us moving and grooving. But then also like realizing that this is not going to end in two weeks, mm -hmm. as they had said in the beginning, or like as pe many people thought from the beginning. Yeah, I think I think a big key is yeah subverting your expectations and gratitude mm -hmm. i think that like even being being able to be somewhere like this right now in it you know it, it makes us open our eyes to the things that like we can do and that like are really like special special and simple mm -hmm. and maybe yeah. things that we wouldn't do totally. you know that we 100%. would just neglect yeah i've been trying to do gratitude like every night when i go to sleep um, geez, I'm in pain. Um, <laughs> as I speak about gratitude. I don't know, it's funny, there, this was just like not how I expected a pandemic to be. And like, I feel like I am having more joy than I would expect a pandemic yeah. to be. And also realizing that like, yes, joy and gratitude, like those are privileged positions to be in. Like the fact that we are able to find joy right now, you know, like yeah. so many people are being evicted from their homes. So many people totally. like are left without options right now because of a lack of work, because of literal illness in the family. But I do, I don't think that it's disrespectful to to say find gratitude or to find joy in this. Who knows if we'll be living this good tomorrow or next year, you totally. know? Or December when my unemployment runs out. Or when my career never comes back and there are no actors ever again. Yes, Carson's an actor, by the way. 
he was on Broadway when this whole <laughs> thing. Broadway. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> when this whole coronavirus thing happened, you were on Broadway. Your first mm. Broadway debut. Yes. And now... Now what? <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm debuting some Easy Mac in the kitchen. <laughs> Life continues, Life and that continues. I, you know, me being sad that that Broadway's not up or that you know there aren't job opportunities for me right now. Me just being sad about it is is not helping. So we hold out hope. We hold out hope, but also it's okay to mourn. <laughs> I I do That's mourn true. the like loss, sort of, of like the life I had. Mm. sometimes or like you know the opportunities that maybe we lost totally um especially as young people we were figuring out where we belong in this world yeah and yeah i think about that too it's like and now we don't know we have no idea where we belong or where we will belong in a year a lot of like the structures that we have in like our in any career really are like momentum based structures mm-hmm. it's like the 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 further you go the more you're seeing the more momentum you have the more you know and then when that momentum stops only the top rise when yeah. it comes back you know here's the other really cool thing is that i think a lot of people are deciding whether or not that's even like a structure they want to participate in like i know so many people who are like you know screw this i'm going off grid i'm like building a bus and i'm you know living rent free uh, in In these people's heads you know yeah like (laughs) i'm I'm literally i'm no longer going to subscribe to sort of that system anymore well i think that's like a thing i'm dealing with currently like separating myself from my my net worth you know what i mean Uh, uh or my value like like I definitely have a problem with doing that. It's like hard to separate from yourself from that when it's been like ingrained into who you are, like in our society. Yeah. But also, it's quite freeing. I think you know. Mm-hmm. I still have a lot of money anxiety, but trying to distance myself from that. But I do think it's helping us to reframe stuff. It's like even that, like the person playing the, the steel drum or whatever we just heard. Like, when was the last time I heard live music? <gasps> Yes, I'm finding more simple pleasures now. Totally, yeah. Than I was before. Yeah, and I think we need to take that into when uh, stuff starts to reopen. We were all distracting ourselves with like, ooh, clubs and 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 dancing yes, and fun absolutely. and you know whatever Drinking, parties. Yeah. And, and I think that um, if we can bring some of that energy into like, what a beautiful little flower that I see here. Mm-hmm. Um, our life yeah. will be more balanced. That's what I like about living in New York because. It's t- it's tough sometimes, especially with the like seasons and and like how you know dirty it can be sometimes and like you know New York is tough. It's not as easy as as where we're from in California, but but what it does is those hard times remind me of the really beautiful things, and I feel like I'm so much more appreciative here, and I'm so much more conscious of the small uh, gifts that we have mm-hmm. because of you know not only the physical seasons like when it's cold i appreciate when it becomes summer or like a beautiful day like this where i never felt like i did that in california but you know the metaphorical seasons the seasons in our minds you know when things get tough i appreciate when they're good so much better mm-hmm.